Welcome back everybody, I'm Tassie, and today I have a special guest with me, Linda. Hello. Linda is from Mom Gamers. Yes. She also has her own YouTube channel. So Linda, what do you do on your YouTube channel? Hi, can I do my shameless plug? My show Oh my shirt? god, go for it. This is it. <laughs> Mom Gamers. Yeah. <laughs> You're so my funny. Little boobs are over the eyes. Okay. Oh <laughs> so Linda, what do you do on your channel, like for Mom Gamers? Okay, Mom Gamers is a YouTube channel. It's a podcast style as as of now, but it's uh, my target audience is from moms. I'm a mom. That's sort of the center of my universe. I talk about mom issues, children, cleaning the house, budgeting, and biggest of all is relationships. I think the key to life is relationships. Um, so that's my channel. Mom and how does the gamers part come into your channel? Basically, so my children love to watch gaming, and I thought. To have a podcast, that's the listening part, but there needs to be a visual component to it. And I just thought have one of my children play, um, have that visual part. So in case if the mom is, wants to watch Mom Gamers, but the kids are like, I don't want to listen to this lady talking, but at least there's a <laughs> Minecraft game playing. I'll put up with it. That was my genius idea. I think it's really funny because I watch your son, because you know, I'm a gamer. Yes. You know, I, I don't have any kids, you guys know, but <laughs> I like to listen to her podcast because she brings up pretty good topics. And oh, and it's like things that I would have never known because I'm not a mom. Oh, <laughs> but I like because she did homeschooling and everything for her kids, the yes. pros and cons and everything. But it's like I'll watch her son play, and it's like I want to go into his game and I want to play because I'm like, don't put the windows there. He's like building windows. Oh. <laughs> He's building like a, a river and everything, and I'm like, let me do that for <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, and what we have here today, Linda brought it, so I really mm. don't know beside, beyond it's Dungeon and Crab. It's right up in here, and it's from Xuan Chen, which is in uh, the University of Minnesota campus in Dinkytown. It's a Chinese place. It's one of those more authentic Chinese places. It's been there forever. Uh, we love that place, and this is their Dungeness Crab. I got the two. The total came to about $73. Holy! For both. <laughs> it was kind of pricey, because it's one of those things where they just give you a market price for whatever the Dungeness Crab is. I made rice. <laughs> It's pricey. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, but it's so good. And what's it flavored with? Because it smells amazing. I keep like sniffing. <laughs> I'm gonna start eating. But yeah. okay, let's do it. So we have rice here as well. We both have rice. Um it is five spice. So get the five spice dungeon <gasps> crab. Do you actually eat the stuff in here? So I put my face in here. I put I just Can I love... see you can I see you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just, oh, I'll, I'll dig it out. Okay. Oh, okay. But if you go to Xuan Chen, they'll have um, black bean Dungeness crab, or they'll have uh, ginger scallion Dungeness crab, which is a more wet style. But those are good, but I really get the five spice that's dry, and it has this crust on it too. Oh, it looks so good. Mm. So you guys, I'm literally like this is the scraping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm seriously like scraping out the goodness here. Okay, I don't know where to start. Um, Just eat. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is so good. Oh my god, thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. So do you eat like all of this is edible? Um I think so, yes. Should I put some rice in there? I've seen people put rice in the And cup. they mix it up. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, oh yes. I love the fried part and the spices are so good. Mm-mm. It's gonna go in. Oh my god, fried spice. Okay. Mmm. You know Mark Weens from YouTube? Mark Weems, he's the guy that eats. He's like, he looks Amerian. Oh, yeah, uh huh. And we're always, we're always at home, we always do the Mark Weems challenge where you eat. And it's so good that you lean, like, mmm, like that. He's really, he, that's his little thing. It's so cute. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I was joking on rice. Hashtag there. Mark Weems challenge. Just look it up. Oh my um, god, really? So I love this because just the outside of the shell is a meal itself. Okay. What do you do with the outside? You just, I just lick it. If you guys, if I wasn't being videotaped, this would be... Just do it. PG-13. <laughs> it would become PG-13. Just the stuff that you just lick on it. Because if you, I'm not sure you can tell, but they stir fry it and then they deep fry it. And um, it's really, it's like the right amount of salt, the right amount of seasoning. So the inside it is very salty. Like saltier than I was expecting. Because mm. you know, it's like crab. I thought mm. it'd be like... Not salt, <laughs> like like sea salt, but like um, I feel like it's really salty. So I needed a lot of rice with it. Mm, I love the size. Just lick and lick it. Um, 
crack. And I'm telling you guys, this lick on the outside, it, it, it <laughs> looks pretty funny, just licking at. Mm, 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 mm. It's a little fingernail thing. So I didn't know there's little bones in there. <laughs> mm. Oh, the shell? Uh-huh. Okay. And I, I just ate it. This is so cool. I've never eaten the inside of the Dungeness Crab here. Do you like Dungeness Crab? Mm-hmm. Mm. So for all you Tassie viewers, your fan, Tassie fans, um, a couple things. This baking tray is a little bit, it's more, it's larger in person. <laughs> When I watch, it looks like the size of a... Of oh, a, no, I have a smaller version of it. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's it. Because it looks like the size of a laptop, the one that I've seen before. Like, mm -hmm. even smaller. And then, um, it's sitting... It's sitting this is on, a half sheet of a baking. And mm -hmm. the other one is a small the one. Quarter, like, mm -hmm. oh, the quarter size. Almost. Um, and whenever <laughs> I'm watching you eat, it looks like it's on a stand, a box. Uh-huh. And I'm so afraid you're going to tip the whole thing over. I know, but it's only like four inches off the real table. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, off of my real dining table. Mm. Oh my god, I don't even know like where to start. This is like a ton of food. When you said crab, I thought she meant like... Mm. I do that in all my episodes. <laughs> all my seafood videos, I spray stuff everywhere. But I thought it was like like snow crab. So I was like, oh yeah, two's mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> Remember one time you had the king crab and the whole thing came out? Mm -mm. That, that was, was awesome. That was memorable. So it's like a, a meal and a dessert because you get the inside and then you can still play with the outside because you eat the inside <laughs> and I just, I just lick on the outside. It's, it's like a meal itself. Do you think it's a tad bit salty? Mm. Only the inside. Mm, okay. Only the inside was salty. The rest is fine. Mm, mm, mm. I like how it is like, is this like cornstarch that they douse it into before they fry it? Mm, probably. Maybe cornstarch or um, mm. a mixture of cornstarch and flour. Dungeness crab. And for anybody who's never had Dungeness crab, mm, how would you say it tastes like? Dungeness crab? Mm -hmm, compared mm. to like snow crab or something more common? Unfortunately, I'm not a super huge crab like connoisseur or shellfish. I just... I just mm -hmm. eat it. You know, I always know that um, snow crab, you gotta really fight for the meat more. You have to really work at it. King crab, there's big chunks of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's less stringy. Dungeness crab is less stringy than snow crab. To me, it's really reminiscent of um, blue crab meat, mm. but it's bigger chunks. Yes. I've never but it's, um, eaten blue crab, I think. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to. Oh, how do you even like? Um, so I don't know. A lot of people say I suck at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Other people say I'm doing fine. <laughs> but dungeon is crab, and I, and whenever I go to restaurants, I ask them, "How do you eat dungeon uh, the blue crab?" Uh, most of the meat is in the the body, the okay. legs, like I the see claws. Them almost like squish it out, almost. Mm -hmm. like. And the thing is, like with blue crab meat, it's very soft and tender like this, and it's sweet too. And this meat here, it's softer than us. Uh, what is it? Snow crab? Mm. This is like really, really like melt in your mouth kind of buttery. It's really good. I think it's yeah, softer, sweeter. Mm -hmm. Where I think king crab is so big, but it's not king that it's so tough, but it's just um, somehow crabs, it ruins the, yeah. the, the excitement over it because it's so big. I mean, generally people like king crab because uh, it's such huge chunks of meat. But it's like, um, it's really salty for me. Like I can only eat so much king crab. Really? Mm -hmm. Because it gets really salty. But I'm a, I have a thing against like really salty stuff. Are you a sweet person? Like you like desserts? Mm, not mm. really. <laughs> like I'll eat some desserts, but I'm not like really into baked goods much. Mm. Tassie, you're your fans. I want to know why. Comment below, please, or with your psychic abilities. Why do you like to watch Tassie <laughs> crustacean? <laughs> why? What? What's what's you guys like to have her suffer to get through the meat or what? <laughs> Jeez. Mm -mm -mm. 
So I feel like my life has gotten to this point. This is the first time in my life where I've had one Dungeness craft myself. Really? Yes. Oh, well, is it because you have kids that well, you have to share? <clears throat> Every time we do have it, it's at a restaurant. And we always get like just the one, maybe the two, but there's a huge circle table to share oh, with. Oh yeah, and everybody's gonna want to eat and some. I'm eyeballing that last leg, you know, <laughs> pretending I'm eating the chicken wings, and I'm just eyeballing who's gonna take it, waiting for the lazy Susan to come around. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, like I totally get you on that. Like, um, like so a lot of people you guys know, like I eat, I eat out a lot alone. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll go to like family style restaurants. I'll sit there. My food will come and I'm like dancing in my chair and I'm eating. <laughs> and I get people who stare at me. Because they're like, I think people think it's weird. Especially if you go to like a family style restaurant, like a Vietnamese restaurant, and there's like tons of families there. And I come alone. <laughs> what are your, but, of your places you go to? Um, I like to go to Eat Street a lot. Because like the thing is my boyfriend he's gluten free. And so he there's is? Like, yeah, so there's oh like a gosh. lot of certain types of foods he can't eat. Yeah. But like I'll crave it. And then he's not like not in the mood to eat it, so I'll just go and eat it myself or else I'm not like mm. with my boyfriend. Oh, but then like um salty, you're right. It's inside. Uh -huh. It's kinda of salty. And then like um oh, the outside it is really good. Mm. But the perks of eating alone. Yeah, you don't have to share your food. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand, like, you know, when you go out to, with a crowd, mm -hmm. like, to be social. But if I'm really hungry and I'm really, really craving something, I have no problem announcing to everybody else, like, I'm not going to share it. Like, you want some, really? I advise you to order your own. Um, you said that with Oh, yeah. Friends. Okay. Way to go. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like, it's like, because that's exactly what I want. <laughs> I've been craving this. I want to eat it. I'm going to eat all of it to myself. <laughs> Girl. Mm, but yeah. I wouldn't have a problem either if somebody said that to me because I'd be like, hey. I get it. You know, mm. like, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'll order my own if I want it. I'm not brave enough to say that. Uh, yeah, I wish I could say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually like, here, you guys want to taste? Aww. Hmm. Like, what is usually a thing that you would get for yourself? That I wouldn't share? Yeah. Depends on my mood. Because, like, when I did that, we were at um, a bar. It was a regular bar, but they had really good um, that Dunkin' cheese bread that you put into marinara. <laughs> and I, there was a, yes. and I really was craving Jessie. it all day at work. And then I said to my girlfriend, like, that dish is like $7. If you really wanted it, oh you could order your own. <laughs> but that was the only thing I was going to eat, and I wasn't going to eat any of their food. So I was like... I'm gonna order this, but I just want you guys to know, like, I really want to eat this. I'm hungry. I'm gonna eat all of it myself. I'm not gonna share it. And they were like, okay. And then they each ordered their own thing, mm -hmm. and they agreed if they were gonna share it or not too. So it's just like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Over like cheesy bread marinara sauce. I thought it was gonna be like Chilean Chilean <laughs> sea bass, know, something fancy. Well, Linda, didn't my older sister Nancy ever tell you that? I was the youngest for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah. So by the way, that is how I know Tassie is that I'm best friends uh, with her older sister. She's a dear, dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And some of you guys met Nancy on my channel before she was here. Right around the new year, we did uh, Indian, uh, Indian food together. I'll link it in the description so you can see what my older sister looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've known Nancy since... We were in 10th grade. We shared a gym locker and we've been really good friends ever since. Yeah, you guys were like, I remember seeing Linda as a kid. <laughs> Back in high school. I, I don't know why, I've always, I think she feels like um, a soulmate or something. I don't know, that's that's a strong word, but I just feel like- That's how you feel about Nancy? Yeah, it's just, I'm very close to her. We don't have to see each other every day. You know. We well, that's honestly how best friends are. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we don't, don't have to see each other every day. Like we see each other maybe once a year and we'll pick up right where we left off. Yeah. And that's that's so great. So Nancy, this is for you. And she doesn't like crustaceans. I know. This is Nancy doesn't like seafood. Mm -hmm. She's not allergic, she just doesn't like the taste of it. <laughs> it was um, 
the steak kind of girl. And Linda has mentioned how much Nancy and I we look alike. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I know all your sisters. Yes. So the whole napkin thing. Um, I, am, I too am a, a napkin hoarder. Um, which I should use some by now. <laughs> I really don't mind, um, you know, if you use napkins like you, Tassie. My thing is... Um, and my girlfriends know this and people who are close to me it's fine if it's messy but something about mayonnaise and ranch on the corner of people's mouths after they eat <laughs> it's really unappetizing to you please wipe it <laughs> and i love mayonnaise and i love ranch but just not on the so corner funny. of your mouth and oh me my God. and i'm very aware of myself like oh i hope i'm wiping it <clears throat> something about the oil or the emulsification i don't know <laughs> My biggest pet peeve with eating mm -hmm. is people who will eat like chips and then they rub it on their pants. <laughs> That's me. I do that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or my my inside my car couch. The car. What? It's, it's so gross. That's why my car smells. <laughs> so you really do that? <laughs> yes. Mm -mm. I can't stand it when people do that. I'm like. I'm, yes, it is gross. I, I hear you. Like your pants. Owie, my nail. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm gonna use some shears. <laughs> but then like, okay, that's smart. yeah, like, I don't know. I don't like it when people like wipe their hands on their pants. Well, my, and my they happen to do it, like they'll eat a few and then they'll wipe it on their pants. And then they'll wipe it on you and then they'll wipe it on their pants. Like, what are you doing? I mean, do you want to wear the seasoning? Like, <laughs> that is the weirdest thing. I see the sour cream French onion one. Oh my mm. God. <laughs> Like, that would be, like, the last thing I would want to wipe it on my own clothes. It is pretty gross. My, my thing is that I'm usually out. I'm always, like, I guess that's my excuse. I'm always out with the kids. I have, like, fractions of a second to do something. Gotcha. And if I'm eating, there's stuff in my hands, it's gone in the pants. So do you think, is that something you developed when you had kids? Or do you think that's something that you've always developed as, as a kid? I, I might be always been pretty gross myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I've been very dainty. So even these... Um, even these onions are a meal of itself. They're flavored really nice. I love really? them. Yeah. Even just this with rice in your mouth. I do like grilled onions. Mm. Okay, I saw that one channel that you said you like, Dong Hang or something. Dong Hang? And all he does is eat. Oh my god, he can eat, man. He like, he doesn't even talk. No, oh, he does on, on some of them. Oh. Um, his original ones, okay, because ASMR type videos didn't really take off until what like, like last year only. What do those um, letters mean? Autonomous sensory residian something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's basically censoring, like the censorships of like, not, what the heck did I say? It's basically like, um, Sounds mm -hmm. like like when you go to the movie theater and you see like they they the promo right before the previews they'll show like a roller coaster <laughs> and you you hear pop falling into a cup of ice you know like that makes you want to drink the pop you know so it's kind of like that because uh, you could hear every nook and cranny noise mm -hmm. it's almost like a high super high definition uh -huh. mic like real life experience kind of a thing and uh, a lot of people really like that stuff mm -hmm. I do too. I have a lot of viewers who want me to do ASMR type video. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm that good at it though. <laughs> Would you need a different mic? Uh, yeah, or my mic to be closer. Mm. And I'll probably try it, but I don't think I'm that good at it. Mm. I swear you can make like a stock or a soup out of the um, shells. It's so mm -hmm. flavorful. Do you like Do you like the five spice? Oh god, yeah, yeah. I like five spice though. Really. Mm. So that restaurant, is it like um, Village Walk? It is like Village Walk, but I think it's better. <gasps> oh, well, that's pretty see. Oh, okay. plus Village Walk is currently not there anymore. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like um, Peking Garden. Have you been to Peking? You like Peking? Okay, Village Walk is better than Peking Garden. <laughs> mm. 
But I think, you know, it's kind of like those, um, you know, like burger joint or chicken kind of like arguments people have. Mm -hmm. It's what you grew up with. It's what you're used to. Yeah. Oh, I remember the Village Walk days, um, going to the U of M. Oh my god. And I, I liked it. I remember, well, my biggest memory of going there, because it was open until 2 to 3 a.m. Mm hmm Always the late crowd. So it was really fun, very, lots of memories. Um, the food was good, but for me, I just thought Xuan Chen, it's more authentic. I've never been to Xuan Chen. Mm hmm <laughs> All of this is gonna get into my nails. <laughs> I'm making a mess here. I'm oh, sorry. It's, no, oh my gosh, it's okay. You're so funny, Linda. So, Linda, how did you get your idea oh, what? of doing mom gamers? Um, a couple things. I I absolutely love, genuinely love the YouTube platform. I think it's just one of the most amazing inventions in this, the latest century. It's like uh, anybody who has an idea, thought, can just play them, place themselves out there. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like opening a storefront business that's open 24-7 and, and you know, you can sell donuts, whatever, or you could, uh, and YouTube, you could sell Watch Me Fish in the northern, the Bounty Waters. Mm -hmm. Something very unique, you know, something, watch me teach you how to knit, you know, like. And you can really learn too. Well, by just watching YouTube videos, like you can learn a new set of skills. So that's the deal is that, um, you know, we homeschool and YouTube was a big part of our curriculum. Oh, really? So, yes. So much stuff. There's like those TED Talks or those TED Ed. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, for a while, we went into printed circuit boards, like um, inside electronics pieces. Mm -hmm. And I just, I went notes over them. And I just kept wanting to learn more and more about them. Um, learn, you know, the basic language arts math. If ever we get stuck on a problem during curriculum, oh, how do we, you know, divide fractions again? Were you not terrified of doing homeschooling? At first, I, I it was, it's overwhelming when you get into it. It, it is. But it, I, it sounds so terrifying, like... Yes, but I learned that it's quite the opposite. And if it can give any advice for someone going into it, will be to, um hire a consultant for an hour so like just pick their brain like show me everything that you do everything right that you did everything wrong that you did mm -hmm. what's a typical day what are the typical things that you do mm. and that's what i did and that really helped accelerate <clears throat> getting getting into homeschool sooner uh, but it's so fun and if anything the curriculum part was like just a small portion <laughs> of our day but Mm -hmm. A lot of field trips, lots of projects. Projects was our big thing. So back to YouTube. <clears throat> I love YouTube. And then I love um, being a mom. Again, being a mom is a big thing in my life. But then, it kind of, getting deeper into it, because YouTube has a brilliant mm -hmm. thing called ads, or it, it's market itself very well. And then I think moms, you know, they spend about... Probably, I think anything that comes to the front door as far as consumer purchases are from moms. You know, like about 80%, 90%, because they're purchasing for their kids, their husbands, the household, their dogs, mm -hmm. you know, the house itself. And so I have to ask the biggest question I'm always curious about with uh, homeschooling. Oh, yeah. How do you handle the um, social aspect? There's a couple parts to it, a couple of schools of thought. You can now in this day and age, you can easily hook up with um, many homeschool groups mm. and kids. Mm -hmm. you, you can overly, you can easily overbook your week. You go to one homeschool group, which I'm, I am, I do one homeschool group, homeschool group a week. Oh, okay. This is the play group, and from there you can say, hey, what do you guys do for um, art? What do you guys do for um, exercise? What do you guys do for? Um, Ge uh, geography and then these moms can just say oh we go to this class we go to this class we make a group together you want to join us some are paid some are free uh, so you can easily hook up with other kids um, it does take work because you're I'm always in the van shuffling kids here and there mm, I bet. okay c c compared to a school where you just drop off and there's like a zillion yeah. kids there 
and I'll see you later at four o'clock. Um, so there, there are times when it'll just be me and my children, mm -hmm. not, you know, um, by ourselves. But there, there are times when we, we could be with lots of other kids. But then, at the same time, this is my own personal opinion, is that the children that I do meet from homeschool, wonderful families, spectacular kids, I do think um, my children, it'd be good if they had more exposure to different types of kids. I think oh, yeah. they're, they're more sheltered. Um, and then just from my cohort, like from my own experience, a lot of them, because um, because my kids were kind of athletic, or at least they like sports, but then a lot of kids that I met kind of lacked the athleticism. Gotcha. Um, so like, mm -hmm. do you ever wonder, okay, so like what grades are these like that you have there do homeschooling? I had a, well, my seventh grader and a fifth grader. But then just last September, this uh -huh. current school year that just ended, my oldest, my seventh grader, went into public school. Okay. Went into public school. And he loved it. I was going <laughs> to say. Like the first week, I'm like, honey, um, you miss us? You want to go back to home school? <laughs> He's like, nope. He said, no, but fine. <laughs> see, like, you know, like mm. the pros and cons, like I would see from that. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, because when you said homeschooling, I thought you like had like, hired somebody to come in to teach your kids right no mm -mm. yeah so like um but it, it to me it, it just honestly as soon as you said that it made me nostalgic for my own childhood for when i was in school because mm -hmm. then it made me like oh i would have never met all of my friends mm -hmm. um all the connections that you make and everything and you know doing sports and you know i was big into like volleyball and hockey and everything and I wouldn't be involved in that, like, community sense. Yes. <clears throat> and then, like, you know, I would go to church with a lot of the people I went to school with, or I would do Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, that whole community involvement. And, you know, like, doing presentations in front of the whole classroom mm -hmm. to build your confidence and everything. Yes. Those were, th that was just, like, my aspect, like, that I would miss. Do you miss any of that? Um, oh, yeah, of course. Big memories with, um, being with, a group sitting at school, making memories with your friends. How oh, you met Nancy and everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> the things we did. That... So how come you decided to send your older kid to uh, regular public school now? So my again, my philosophy I, I, that I've learned from other whole, uh, household homeschool moms was that homeschool is a it's a it's a year by year process. It should never be we're gonna homeschool forever. That's it. You have no oh, say. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, my son was getting older. He really wanted to get more, know more people, more friends. Plus, they had um, organized sports at school, mm -hmm. soccer, tennis. Mm -hmm. And he really wanted to do that. And it, it felt right. It felt like the right thing to do. And, and I'm so glad that he did it. He loved school. And he did go through some unpleasant things, too. Which, I'm oddly enough, I'm kind of glad that he went through, too. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a growing thing. One of the things after the first week was like, Mom, I noticed a lot of kids swear. <laughs> We're so sheltered. Um, <laughs> oh my god, that's so innocent. Mm. <gasps> and then this couple of times, um, <clears throat> a few kids, like, I guess, his, not that they were beating up on him, but they just, like, slap each other really hard, like, oh, hey, yeah. how are you? And uh -huh. he wasn't used to that. Oh. But then I think he got socially smarter, too. Uh-huh, he adapted. Yeah. And then he joined uh, sports, and that was so fun. Does it make your other kids envious? Right, so this year was really hard. My fifth grader was like, oh, but, you know, why can't I go? Okay, seriously, this table's not, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, it's, okay. you don't even see my side. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, why can't I go? I'm like, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, my, to my son, Remy. Yeah. Maybe next year, and most likely, and then this is next school season, he'll go to school. But this year was really hard, because it was just him, him and my two younger children, uh, who are pretty much uh, pre preschool size. So it was, this show was pretty boring, pretty rough. I feel really bad for my my, my second baby. Yeah, I was trying to do my best to make it fun, but... Um, they had that jealousy and the longness. Well, sometimes it takes more people just to make it more fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. If it was just him, it was, what I do you want to do? We're done with this thing. What, what do you want to do next? Well, we're done with this. And it kind of lost its flair. But some people 
some kids, they thrive homeschool at different various stages in their lives. Uh -huh. Some really need it when they're young. Maybe they are um, what you would think ADHD or ADD or something or some sort of behavioral and they need that one-on-one -on -one time. Gotcha. Or some uh, student, some ch children, when they're older, they're so independent. They're ready to be in college already, or they're ready to work. Uh, or they're ready, they're, they're not, they don't want to be in the high school setting. You know, they don't, they're not really interested in the So prom. it's really up on the, the child. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm. I can't believe I'm living my dream. Just having a whole <laughs> crap myself eating in front of a camera with Tassie. Oh my god. You know what's funny? <laughs> eating in front of a camera, perfectly fine, I guess. <laughs> Whenever, if I smile, if there's a speck of green on my teeth, smile, then I'm put me in a psych ward. That's, that's oh bizarre. Oh my right? god. This is fine, but the teeth is weird. You viewers can't see the your awesome loyal your, your your fan base is really sweet too. I see the comments. They're mm -hmm. so supportive. So they really nice. are supportive and they're really really sweet. Who are these? Who are you people? They're so sweet. What do you guys say? <laughs> they're, so, they're so nice. Um. Anyways, but um, you can't tell, but you know, Tansy put a lot of work into her setup. This <laughs> this is amazing. Has oh, lights, yeah. camera, cook. Um, she's yeah, she's put a lot of work into it. I'm so embarrassed when you see my setup. It's ah, oh my god, Linda. so embarrassing. It's like no, really honestly, it, it was like a learning process. Wasn't it fun though? Mm hmm. It really was. Like people teach you that stuff on YouTube again. And from my personal my YouTube journey, I've decided to make it a fun process, a fun mm -hmm. journey. You know, yes, of course, I want to have you very successful right you away. You have to make it fun, though. Like, I love learning um, new equipment setup or how to change sound filters because sound is my big thing. Having I mean, good sound oh, is my big thing. Uh -huh. um, uh, and planning for my monthly topics. I have I have a lot of... It's really it's fun. Not, uh -huh. It's a lot. But, you know, like... Like, for you, it's amazing because, you know, I... I don't have any kids, I don't have anybody to take care of. Mm -hmm. It's really just myself, you know, so. <laughs> and I get really exhausted. Like, I can't even push out, like, five videos a week, you know? Really? Because mm -hmm. like, you, you have to really work, make yourself. Yeah, because I work full time, you know, yes. I date, I have a social life. You are busy too, lady. Mm hmm. But I mean, like, how you have time. <laughs> you're, you're a wife, you yes. have a household to run. Mm hmm. Uh, that's very true. And before going into that, I had to mentally say that is very true. I had to um, plan around it. So my thing is, I used, and I started in February of this year, 2018. So my thing was, I stayed up um, after all the kids went to bed, like around 9, 10. Then that's when I would start doing my YouTube stuff. <clears throat> However, um, it was kind of a strain because I read a really good article that kind of I've always applied in my life that... A person has a finite amount of good decisions in a day. <laughs> so then after that, they start making poor decisions because they're just tired. They're exhausted. Oh, okay. I was going to say, when, <laughs> when does this happen? <laughs> so, so, the late, so that's why you try to do your hardest things in the morning when you're bright and fresh. You, know, you do the hardest things in the morning. Not you? Nope. Um, <laughs> no meetings until 10 in the morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> so can but I I'm not a morning person, though. Yeah. Anyways, um, stayed up late. I could stay up late until, you know, maybe midnight, one or two, but then sometimes my baby be crying and then mm -hmm. morning happens and I'm pretty dead in the morning. So that was kind of hard. Like Tassie in the morning is very, very different <laughs> but it's from like... Tassie in the evening. Cause you know, I am more of a night person. Mm -hmm. You know, like for me in the morning, like I need coffee. Like don't talk to me. <laughs> that kind of person. <laughs> Um, but then I've just been watching other YouTube, and these are the YouTubes who, the channels who try to, um, encourage you to have a good YouTube channel, right? The ones who help. Uh-huh. Yeah. Who grow your channel. And they're like, hey guys, um, one thing that helped me was I got up early. And I've, I've never been a morning person too, okay? <laughs> my face, okay? And they're so, I just, I just said, forget it. I'm just going to change my mindset, stop complaining about it. So I just, recently, maybe this past two, three weeks, I got up at five or four or five. 
in the I'm morning. Gonna, I sleep early though. I sleep at nine now. I put it. Oh is, okay. Which is kind of hard too because I love staying up late. I can stay up late like crazy. But I just had to stop changing to stay change my mindset, and I got up early, and I really like it. And that's a motivator because I like it, then I'll do it more. Uh, it's like a secret secret time in the morning it's all quiet and then my mind is really fresh you know because i can think better it's like <clears throat> yes it's possible <laughs> once i had the whole idea of working out in the morning mm -hmm. oh my god was i crabby all day because normally i'm a person who works out at, right after work yeah. yeah but i decided you know i'm gonna try this whole working out in the morning thing i was exhausted all day. It was one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> Why did you stay up late the night before? No, I didn't. Cause yeah. I knew I was gonna get up at four at uh, four thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. Cause normally I, you know, like I have to get up by six thirty to get ready for go to work. Mm -hmm. But I'll stay up until like past midnight. Yeah. Probably why I get so tired. But it's like I don't, I don't, I don't get tired like at nine or ten o'clock at night. You know. Yes. Because I'm just so used to. Your melatonin and adrenaline is in that mind shift. It's not putting yourself to sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's like, <clears throat> I can't imagine going to sleep early. Like, honestly, though, like when I do burn myself out, mm -hmm. which I do, like I will sleep. Like it'll be like nine o'clock. I'll knock out. Mm. Or it'll be like 10. But that will happen like once every three months or so. Okay. But yeah, I'm definitely more of an evening person. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I could stay up late. Like, monk for your nose, I got that down. I could stay up <laughs> Oh my god, no. I love staying up late. That's so boring, I would fall asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, really funny to your viewers. I live in Northeast Minneapolis. Tassie, you're in South Minneapolis. And coming here took two plus hours. <laughs> oh my god. I could have driven to Duluth and got there past okay? <laughs> I could. <gasps> and it was it was stop and go and stop and go. It was terrible. Traffic is the worst in the Minneapolis area. Especially like if it rains just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh you're, people... you're expecting an extra 30 minutes in your commute. <laughs> mm -hmm. The rain just puts everybody in a frenzy. They can't drive. Even just a little rain too. You know with crab or shellfish, you know I think I've eaten my whole crab right here. You did. Uh -huh. yeah. That's all yours. I, this may be yours, but I'm eating it. So I don't know. But I don't know. <laughs> you know what? You know what the really gross feeling when you get crab stuck in your teeth. Have you ever gotten that before? When you bite a shell and it gets stuck in your teeth. The shell? Yeah. Like you're biting it and then a little part breaks off and it, oh, it's like how meat oh. gets stuck in your teeth. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm This is so good though. And you're right, even the onions are really good because it's got that grease on there. Mm hmm. Try to stick your rice and scoop it up. Mm -hmm. So, mukbang, do you have to finish mm -mm -mm. what you're eating? Barbie? Some mukbangers do, but you know, like, some mukbangers, they have such a huge stomach and they have mm. the ability to eat all that. Like, on my bucket list, it is to eat five packs of ramen in one sitting. I'll probably never Ooh, achieve it. that's so much. I know, I'll probably never achieve it. But like Donge, he'll eat five packs of ramen and a pizza. <gasps> no. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> how do you do it, dude? All those carbohydrates, oh my gosh. But it's like he's trained his stomach for that, you know? What's his story, what, who is he? He's actually, him and his brother, they're actually DJs in South Korea. Really? But they live like, in a rural area. It's really? not gonna be like sold. They're like country bumpkins, you know. <laughs> Ooh. And his dad, he has a farm, and then they'll show episodes of them on their dad's farm, like making um, all the banchan, all the, <gasps> the Korean side dishes. Oh. Any place you want to travel, to eat, or just to travel? Oh my God, we were. I was just talking about this in another episode. I want to go to. Um, I want to go to what's it called? Uh, New York. New York is like the perfect place to get 
food from all Everything. over the world. Uh huh. Mm hmm. You all right, this is my last one. I'm done. <laughs> you, so you've never been to New York? Mm -mm. You've never okay. been to New York? We know Nancy has, right? Oh, God, Nancy's been everywhere in the world. <laughs> everywhere in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I'm such a foodie person, I would travel just for the food. Yes, that's my idea of traveling. Mm hmm Is to go but, there, eat, mm -hmm. eat some more. Like, a lot of people, they want to go and, like, do the touristy stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Like, New York, you know, like, think of Statue of Liberty. I don't want to see the Statue of Liberty. If I see it from a distance, oh. I can say, I, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be on that island. I don't need to touch her. <laughs> You're going to go to Flushing, Queens, right? Mm -hmm. And go to those Chinese, uh, authentic mm. places. I'm going to go to tons of places. Mm. I was there once many years ago, and it's a different landscape. Really? You know how there's, like, the desert, there's the mountains, mm -hmm. there's pra prairie where we are. There's um, Oceanside, and then there's, there's New York. That's all skyscrapers. Oh, God, yeah. It's very different. Everybody's moving, walking. Mm. I'm such a city person. I'm a huge city person. Like, when I lived in the suburbs, I hated it. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in the burbs, too. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> so do you think... In the future, if you get married, have children, you'll still stay in the cities. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even with children? Oh, no, no children. I only have dogs. <laughs> really? You know, that, you know that for sure? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm, not, I'm not into having children. <laughs> if men could have children, I'd probably have four kids by now. <laughs> but, but I'm not putting my body through that. <laughs> I'm too selfish. It's good to know what you want. Yeah. And be clear about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to know what you want. My sister Sweet. Nancy, she's so adamant about, you'll know when you meet the right one. <laughs> I am the right one. Mm. <laughs> and I have met me, and I have said no to children. Wow, it was just like, like any guy I ever date, that's the biggest clear thing I would tell them. You will not have children from me. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what you want, Nancy. No babies. Mm. Well, I think it's because, you know, I spent so much of my youth mm -hmm. raising and taking care of other people's kids. Okay. Like, I should actually have a son who's in college right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I raised him and he knows it. You know, like, he'll he'll tell me that I was his second mom. Even now oh. as an adult, he, he always recalls it. Yes. And it's just, you know, like, oh, uh, you know, it was like, um, it was like a sister and brother relationship. Yeah, it was like, sometimes I was like his mom, and so mm -hmm. it was just like, we had a really good relationship, and my God, like, he made me watch Power Rangers so many times. <laughs> That's like how every time I see Power Rangers, it gives me, like, horrible, like, flashbacks. <laughs> okay, so you are, like, a surrogate mom already. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're a mom already. I'm done. <laughs> I didn't have to birth all these children. Like, my oldest niece, you know, I helped uh, take care of her a lot when she was young, too. And Oh, my God, was she a crier. Was she... Tell her that, okay? Mm. Oh, I do. <laughs> I'm like, God, you know what she cried when you were a kid? <laughs> and I was like in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And I was helping take care of her. <laughs> oh, I know you had um, Every quite day after students. school. Yeah, so it's just, you know, I don't, I don't I, that's not for me. That life's not for me. Yeah. But I think me witnessing other people. Mm hmm. Relationships deteriorate a lot. And you know, these are definitely just the people that I've witnessed, you know. Like, they either focus just on themselves and the relationships for it to survive, and then they neglect the children a lot, or they, they focus only on the children because there's nothing else left in the relationship. And there are people who I'm like, just separate already. <laughs> like, mm. you'll both be all happier. Like, just, just do it. <laughs> there's, only, there's only two left. They're, oh, like, they're soulmates. I'm not for you. <laughs> this is your dream. No, you don't yeah. have to eyeball it. It's yours. I can't believe it. <laughs> the mm. girl who doesn't share and she's like gonna get it because I'm mm. done eating. I was like scarfing my face down though as you were like talking and I'm like, uh-huh. Uh. <laughs> I didn't notice until it was gone. <laughs> it's mm. really good. I am very full. Mm. This was really good though. I highly recommend Dungeness Crab. 
You liked it? You're oh, yeah. Liked it? it was really good. good. Mm -hmm. It was really good. I mean, like, I'm a huge Village Walk fan because of, you know, like, childhood, growing up, going there. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, that was the first place I had deep fried oysters, the jumbo ones. Mm -hmm. Really good. I also had it in the black bean sauce. Really good. The Hop Hop J. It's like with beef brisket, and you also got That's beef Santa's tendon. Oh, too. that one is amazing, you guys. Right? Like I'm, they I'm, make it better than Peking Garden. Hmm. But Village Walk isn't there anymore. Oh, I don't know. Village Walk was just like nostalgic, you know. All right, you guys, we are done eating. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. And don't forget to check out Linda's channel, Mom Gamers. I'm gonna link her information in the description box below. Thanks, everybody. Bye.